Inscriptions are very interesting because they were written directly by the ancient peoples themselves. There are secrets buried under ash, mud and time. Stories we thought had vanished forever. But what if the past wasn't silent at all? Just unreadable until now? You know, it's wild how artificial intelligence isn't just about the newest phone or the future of work. It's actually dragging old, forgotten pieces of history right back into the light. The more we read about it, the more it feels like we're watching history being put back together, piece by piece. Take the Herculaneum Scrolls. Now that's a mind-blowing story. These were papyrus scrolls, basically cooked solid when Mount Vesuvius exploded in 79 CE, the same eruption that buried Pompeii, but instead of ash, Herculaneum got buried deep in hot mud, which preserved the scrolls inside these rock-hard, burnt chunks. They literally looked like pieces of burnt wood. For centuries, no one could read them. People tried everything to open them, went from slicing, soaking, even pouring mercury inside, and it just ruined them. Scholars finally stopped and said, we'll lose everything. Then a computer genius, Brent Seals, came along and said something that sounds crazy for a history problem, but totally normal for tech. Don't physically open them. Just scan them and unwrap them digitally. So, his team built 3D models of the inside, tracing all the tiny layers. The huge problem was the ink. The papyrus is black. The ink is black. It's like trying to read a note written with a graphite pencil on a lump of charcoal. That's what we are hoping to reach. So maybe we will see what exactly the work is and we don't have to guess. This is where the AI stepped in. It's like when you zoom way in on a super blurry photo on your phone, hoping to see a sign or a word. They used machine learning to do that, but on an insane scale. The AI models started noticing tiny differences in texture and pattern that the human eye would just miss. Then, a scholar realized that what looked like cracks inside the scroll were actually dried up ink. That simple discovery changed everything. First, they found a single word, porphyra, which means purple, then full sentences. Now we can read columns from one scroll discussing things like pleasure and philosophy. Imagine that. Words written 2,000 years ago by someone who never thought anyone would read them again are being recovered by a machine. And there are hundreds of scrolls left. It's a whole ancient library we couldn't access until now. Similar stuff is happening with stone carvings. DeepMind created an AI system called EINAS to read old Roman inscriptions. The kind you see in museums where half the letters are chipped away. The AI was trained on patterns from over 170,000 other inscriptions. It learned how Romans used language, how laws were written, and what regions used certain spellings. It's just like when you're texting a friend and you can finish their sentence because you know exactly how they talk and what they'd say next. This AI does that, but with ancient Rome. It helped fill in the missing parts of damaged carvings, even when no one knew how long the gap was supposed to be. Most experts said it made their work way faster. But here's the obvious catch. AI can be wrong, seriously wrong. We all know how a chatbot can sound completely confident while giving you total nonsense. So, the warning from the people using these tools is always the same. The AI is not the final boss. It's a helper, not a decision maker. It can scan millions of fragments and match patterns in a fraction of the time it would take a person. But the final call, which is the interpretation and the judgment, has to come from a scholar who understands the history, the culture and the context. Why is this a big deal for daily life? Because if an AI misreads a key phrase and a scholar doesn't double check it, that mistake gets published. It spreads. It becomes fact for countless people and it changes the story we tell about an entire civilization. History isn't just dusty objects, it affects our identity. It changes what kids learn about their origins. It influences how a country sees itself, its tourism and its language efforts. Think about the importance of being able to restore West African manuscripts that were destroyed during colonization, or reading unreadable inscriptions from places like Great Zimbabwe or the Knock culture. This isn't just academic, it's about regions being able to reclaim their own lost stories and identity. It lets people understand where they truly came from. 
AI won't magically fix everything, but it gives us a new way to access what was lost. We have a machine that can find the words that were supposed to stay silent forever. But we, the people, are the ones who must decide what those words actually mean. Following up on that crazy Herculaneum scroll story, there's this other AI project that feels just as mind-blowing, and it's called Ithaca. It's an AI tool built to help historians with epigraphy, which is just a fancy word for studying all those ancient writings carved into stone. Think of those old chipped Roman or Greek tablets you see in museums. Ithaca basically does three huge jobs at once for ancient Greek inscriptions. First, it's a text restorer. When an inscription is damaged and half the words are gone, Ithaca tries to fill in the blanks. On its own, it's about 62% accurate, which is impressive. But when historians, the people who actually know Greek and the context, use it, their accuracy leaps from 25% to 72%. That shows it's not replacing people. It's making them way better. It's like using autocomplete, but for 2000 year old stone texts. Second, it's a geography detective. It can guess where the inscription originally came from with 71% accuracy. This is huge because where a text was written tells you everything about its meaning. Was it a law in Athens, a treaty on an island, or a dedication in a remote temple? Knowing the region is like knowing the source of a new story. It changes how you understand the message. Third, it's a time machine. It can guess the date an inscription was carved, usually within a 30-year window. It's so good that it even helped redate some famous disputed texts from classical Athens, overturning old historical ideas. For example, historians used to rely heavily on things like the Three Bar Sigma Convention, a subtle change in how the letter Sigma was written to date things, but Ithaca looked at thousands of texts and found a more accurate timeline. Ithaca is the first deep neural network which can restore date and place ancient Greek inscriptions. How does it do all this? It's a deep neural network trained on this massive library of nearly 79,000 ancient Greek texts dating from 700 BC to 500 AD. It uses a transformer model architecture that's the same basic type of tech that powers modern chatbots, but for history. It doesn't just give one answer, it gives historians multiple possibilities and even shows its work with these visualization aids. This is key because it lets the human scholar see what parts of the damaged text the AI focused on the most when making its guess. Ultimately, this affects us because it makes history real and accurate. If historians can quickly and accurately read thousands of forgotten texts, they get a much more complete, holistic picture of a critical period in human history. It's like having a broken puzzle with a few hundred pieces missing, and then suddenly being able to see where 70% of those pieces go. Ithaca speeds up work that used to take decades, transforming what we know about the ancient world. And the best part, they made the tool free and public, so anyone can use it. So, we've got these amazing AIs like Ithaca and the Scroll Unroller. They're giving us back words we thought were lost forever. But here's the thing, this rapid jump into using AI, what a scholar named Gabriele Gattilia calls the rapid integration of AI in archaeology, is also raising some serious alarms. We're seeing this explosion in AI research in history and archaeology. I mean, thousands of papers published in just the last 10 years. It's all part of this shift where archaeology is finally dealing with big data, meaning we have huge archives and so much information that AI is becoming the best tool for processing it, automating tasks and finding patterns that a human eye would never catch. But the worry is what happens when we feed all our messy, complex historical reality into a computer program. The biggest risk is oversimplification. To make historical facts easy for a machine to process, we have to simplify them. We basically take a rich, nuanced piece of history and reduce it to numbers and clear categories. When you do that, you risk getting a deterministic view. The machine sees everything as a definite, solid truth, not the messy provisional guess that history often is. Think of it like this. If you train an AI on all the old textbooks we used 30 years ago, it might just keep spitting out those outdated ideas as fact because that's what the data told it. That's how old biases get perpetuated. 
As the AI moves past just scanning and counting and starts getting into the interpretation and reconstruction, like filling in missing parts of a story, historians have to be critical and skeptical. AI can mimic storytelling, it can sound convincing, but it completely lacks the human ability to understand the nuance of history, the politics, the emotion, the cultural context. It doesn't truly understand human historical perspective, it just processes data. So, the new goal isn't just to use AI, but to manage it properly. This means implementing principles like robustness, making sure the answers are solid, transparency, showing how the AI reached its conclusion, and fairness, making sure the data isn't biased. We need to stop treating the historical data the AI gives us as just a final representation of the past and start treating it as a co-creative tool. Basically, we have to develop the human theories and narrative practices around the AI's findings to make sure the historical data still holds meaning. The machine can find the facts, but we have to ensure it's done ethically and informed by human intelligence. Otherwise, we risk being given back a technically perfect but historically flat and potentially biased version of our own past. It's all about finding those necessary guidelines to keep the human in history. The stones are whispering, and history, once broken, burned or buried, is learning how to breathe again. I, I can bring back the words, but only we can bring back the meaning. Maybe the past isn't finished speaking. Maybe we're only now learning how to hear it.